So my name in Navajo is Tkapahatsa, which means edge of a big water. I told you my clans, and I'm from Shiprock, which is not on Inez. Like those are my relatives and the place that I come from, which is really important and kind of um, lets people know your standing or your identification as a Navajo person. It gives a little bit of history in doing so, and like you said, a background. When did you first discover that you were a poet? Did you start writing as a child? I was writing and keeping journals when I was in junior high, and I really enjoyed my English classes. But I actually didn't start writing poetry per se until I was in college. And I took a creative writing workshop with Leslie Silco, who was just a wonderful teacher. Hmm. And she just encouraged me, and I was so surprised that what's a really in Navajo conversation and Navajo daily life was considered to be a strong, to have like a strong poetic foundation. You talked about the person who mentored you when you first got into the university. Were there others? Um, Leslie Marmon Silco was probably my main influence, um, but there were many others, you know, many wonderful poets that I read and going to poetry readings and meeting other people who were writing at the time, um, Joy Harjo, um, Simon Ortiz, people that are my contemporaries. But it was really a matter of discovering for myself as well and through my studies, you know, all types of poetry. So I was so excited when I discovered like the sonnet and the villanelle, um, Shakespeare. Um, it was just amazing to me because I realized I, I already had that. It's got to mm. feel really gratifying to you to sort of be that link to, to the generations that will come after you mm -hmm. with your poetry. My writing is mostly concerned with daily life and think, you know, honoring the way that we live, um, and not just Navajo people, but you know, American life in general. We're talking about the fall here in New Mexico, yeah. the scent of green chili, you know, the crisp air in the morning, and the way the evenings are scented with wood smoke. And it's only in New Mexico. Those are kinds of the, the kinds of memories and the kinds of moments that I really like to capture because when people read that, it just brings them home if they're away. And, um, and if we're here, it just connects us in a way that nothing else can. Absolutely. You know? Often in your poetry, the feminine is a source of power mm -hmm. and balance. Does that come from your Diné heritage? It does. We're matrilineal people, which means, um, as when I introduce myself, I said, and um, that's my mother's clan. But when I say her clan is Twitik Ojo, when I say Nishle, that means I am. So in a sense, I say I am my mother. Mm -hmm. We introduce ourselves and all our, like our main, our primary relationships are through our mother. You have a unique ability to, to think and write mm -hmm. in Diné. Mm -hmm. But then there's also, for us, when you explained how mm -hmm. you said, you know, I am my mother, mm -hmm. the, the protocol or the translation mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. is really an art in and of itself. Sometimes I hear Navajo word and I think, let me see how many parts, like where does that word come from? How many, what, how many meanings are in it? Mm -hmm. I have a poem in my book called Nanes Kade, and it's about tortillas, you know, mm -hmm. making tortillas. But in the word Nanes Kade, Na has um, roots in like to go forward, Na. It also is, Na is also the ground. It's also the, the a, a word that is the root word for corn, which is wow. really essential in the Southwest, na da. Mm -hmm. So na nes, then na nes is to have something flat, kad, and kad is that action of making the bread. Oh, wow. And and then di is means, this is for you, di na ishla, I wow. made this for you. So, you know, I, I'm, I, it really is delightful when I yeah. think about the words and then, think about how they um, break down in Navajo, but then also to think about what it means in English. Sure. And it's truly poetic, 
you know, it's yeah. like one word can be a poem by itself because it contains so much, and there's so much the, the connotations of family and nurturing and memory and sharing and food. Where do you continually look mm -hmm. to get your inspiration? Mm -hmm. You know, my work really focuses on the ordinary and how and our relationship to our communities and our families and our, our kin and, uh, and to place. I'd like to think that the ordinary can, is thought of as a sacred. In Navajo, you know, where the way that you go out in the morning and the, what your, the direction your house faces, even the way you cook certain foods or um, the way you clean your house, all those have a ritual aspect to it. Mm. Poetry can represent that. And I do think poetry is important to everybody, whether we realize it or not. You know, p when people get married, sometimes they read a poem, a baby's born, sure. at funerals, um, when people fall in love. You know, there's, there, there's right. always po poetry of some sort in our lives Absolutely. at pivotal moments. How do you teach poetry and inspire your students? When I teach creative writing, which is the writing of poetry, I approach teaching the way that I was taught learning in Navajo, which is to um, talk about um, how people were given language in the beginning. In Navajo, they say, the sacred begins at the tip of my tongue. So there's very much like a, a sacredness or a holiness cre um, that's associated with creativity, like whatever a person creates and brings into this world um, is sacred, and it adds to the beauty of the world. It adds to the way that all of us live, and we all benefit when people create something new. I would love to ask you to read one of your poems, Hanes Ba Wolye. Mm -hmm. What does that mean before you read it? Tell us um, about that. It just makes me happy. Hanes Ba is the name of our youngest grandbaby, and it's actually my mother's my mother's um, Navajo name. Uh, Hane means stories. Nez is a tall, and she's gonna be a tall baby. <laughs> <laughs> we can, can see already that tell. right now. Yeah. <laughs> And Ba is a, the classic Navajo name for a Navajo girl, and it means warrior. Well, yeah, means that's her name. Great. So that's what I'll read. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yesterday, as I was feeding her, she watched with dark, shiny eyes. Ashinetsutsui, I murmured, smoothing her soft, thick hair. Then she stopped drinking milk and smiled. Her eyes became curved slits of joy as drops of milk slid down her chin. Later, when I changed her diaper, her arms and legs were finally freed from being swaddled, and she became a sweet blur of motion and softness. She stretched her limbs and yawned the whole time, smiling. She kept smiling, her mouth wide open, and her arms twirling and legs kicking. She wears little pink mittens to prevent her from scratching her face. I said to her, Gugu, are you in a boxing club? You better not be. You're only two months old, baby. Wait till you're 18, okay? She was just smiling and batting her gloves around. Then I nuzzled her and said, no boxing club, okay, okay? Then she laughed, a sweet even ripple of happiness. Then we were both laughing, looking into each other's faces. Silly boxing club, silly masana club, silly goo goo. She was touching my face and hair as I kissed and nuzzled her little tummy. At that moment, I rediscovered myself and her radiant laughter. The earlier fatigue, worry, and constant aches that had 
become my companions fell away. I was made anew again. We are all made anew again by the clear radiance of a baby's laughter. Her name is Kanespa Lorna Holona. Kanespa Lorna Holona Olye.